My name is Paul Shore and you are watching The Street Speaks, a spontaneous speaker's corner for Montrealers. Why am I doing this? Well, over the course of the past two years, I've gone around the city and interviewed many Montrealers. And when I ask them the question, when was the last time a journalist or a politician asked you for your opinion about anything? Almost all of them say never. So this is my attempt at an unfiltered platform for Montrealers to express themselves, to speak up, to speak out, to share a story. This week, Montrealers are speaking out about the pros and cons they're experiencing with their technology. Some new immigrants are sharing with me how they ended up here, and others are oozing enthusiasm for our fine city. Also ahead, our house band Skinny Bros returns with special guests, and actor-writer Michael Hughes and storyteller-writer Nisha Coleman both take to the Street Speaks soapbox. Home is Montreal, always been, yeah. always been. The, the fact that there's everyone from everywhere, this open mind is like, I feel like the more I travel, the more I love Montreal. Yeah, I think I think the, compared to compared to most of the US, like people are just generally more politically and culturally aware. And as well, I've never been in a place where I've met so many people that are actually doing what they want as a career. At the diversity, uh, I love to speak French. I learned French first before English, uh, but then again, I, I use it both all the time on a daily basis. Well, Montreal's a great city. I mean, it's multicultural. There's so much to do. Uh, it's, it's, it really is a part of a really great community. Uh, it's good because we get to learn French. We speak French, so a lot of places are really fascinated by that. I mean, the openness, the freedom, just the space, you know, just the space yeah. that you have. Even though it's like 1.77 million or something, yeah. plus the suburbs, or three, whatever. Yeah. But it feels like a, a little village. And just a great culture. Uh, we have a lot of different nationalities. You can be friends with everybody from across the globe. I just walked into a room where I didn't know anybody and I left with like five new Facebook friends. Well, I think it, the culturally speaking, it's a great city because you have many ethnic backgrounds here. I like the fact that living in Montreal, it's very small, so it's easy for me to to get around. It's hard to just do the thing you actually want to do, but in Montreal I feel like I've met so many people that are like doing the thing they love for their job. Or like they are like, they're getting to actually live how they want to and like dream of living and it works and like they're not like exhausted from work and they're not like, like um, strung out. Yeah, I love it. And now that I know other, uh, like the, the other cities, I prefer, I prefer Montreal. So I'm happy that we came here. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm Quebecer, you know. You know, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Canada, you know, that's me, you know, because most people think I'm American because of the swagger, but, you know, I, I love it here. Um, just the culture and the, the people are really nice. I've, I've lived in Vancouver for four months and I didn't notice there's a difference in the way people act with each other. I think yeah. people are more friendly here. You know, I love the fact that I can walk out at night with my children and, uh, you know, for the most part, everyone is, is well, to me, they're nice. My French is not the best. Like, no. They'll say hello to everyone. They'll say hello. I'll say hello. Yeah, I fall in love with Montreal. I don't want to leave. Like, it's it's a it's beautiful city, and especially for people, people living here. It's livable. Yeah, it's very livable. It's, it's so cheap to live in that it gives people the opportunity to, to live how they want to. And that's, like, really rare, especially in the States. Everywhere like this in the States, it, you would have to be, like, Brooklyn or San Francisco or whatever that like lets you do your thing and like live well, you have to be like extremely wealthy. I think it's a city which is a beautiful city, excellent people and the communities are getting along with each other and if we keep on doing what we are doing, I think uh, we are on a, on a good way. Please join me in welcoming back to the show, our house band in Elaine, Skinny Bros with a whole variety of very special guests.
I leave Chad because uh, here for the for a few, you know, political system like this. Russia is not uh, not for everybody. Like not not everybody finds it easy to live in Russia, yeah. and uh, so we moved away. Uh, my father uh, started a church here in, in Montreal. Yeah. Came here and wanted something better for us. Uh, What's happening in Chad now? Now it's political system problem, sometimes government. So it's, uh, it's not only in Chad, but uh, only South African, you know? Yeah. Only South African. Was it the politics? Um, Economics? Just wanted a better, better situation. Yeah? Yeah. I remember a lot. I remember being afraid to get on the escalator because it moved, the stairs moved, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, because my father's a minister and I grew up in the church, uh, we never really saw any or had any real problems with integration. Not that difficult, but of course they had their difficulties, but but the country was very welcoming, so they, they, they didn't feel that it was uh, like, it was like a hard time, like, yeah, yeah. it was not bad. Not like it, it is today with racism and all this, uh, it wasn't as, as uh, in your face as it is now because of social media. I mean, yes, there was racism, but um, we all played together uh, and, and uh, you know, we were kids. I was, I was very shy yeah. when I was a kid. It was hard for me to, when I didn't know any language, like to express myself. So I learned it slowly. I had some friends which, which, uh, which helped me to be more sociable in general. Well, and that's how I made more friends. We were able to be outside till six, seven, eight o'clock at night and not have to worry about safety. Whereas now you couldn't leave your kids outside for 10 seconds. So, you know, it's it's a different time now. Um, so it was just you and your parents? Just uh, me, I, I moved with all my family. How many people were you? Like 20. Are you here with your family or are you alone? Alone. You came alone? Yeah, I came alone. Do you know anyone here? Do you know anyone here? I will I will make family here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. With your family, are they going to come join you? Maybe join me after a few months, I don't know. It's not easy to bring someone here in this country. Have you, were you born here? Uh, no, I was born there, came here when I was six years old. Okay. That's a long time ago, I'm 50 now. And it, 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 they came here, my parents came here first, and then we came afterwards. Where is your family? In the um, country. Are they alive? Yeah. Are they country. safe? I cannot say safe, true, but uh, I believe it, you know. Just I don't have a choice. You know? So why did your parents choose Canada? Do you know why your family chose Canada? Um, well, it seems, seems like to be a, a good country, like a free country. Everyone you see in the, in the city have a smile. Thank you, you're welcome. Uh, everything uh, makes you happy, you know? Immigrants are welcome. Like a lot of, uh, like, uh, like the multicultural side of Montreal, I guess, too. Yeah. If you see some person have problem, you don't see in your face. Because uh, Montreal, this is Montreal. For me, this is Montreal. Yeah. You have problem, you forget your problem. You are in the street, you have a smile. I'm thrilled to welcome to the Street Speak Soapbox, accomplished storyteller and writer, Montreal's own, Nisha Coleman. I can't stand more than passive-aggressive rants. And there is no place with more passive-aggressive rants than Facebook. Second only to cat videos, passive-aggressive rants plaster my newsfeed. And that's because people stay silently fuming in the moment, and then they go home and write a passive-aggressive letter. Dear dog owners, pick up after your pets, you inconsiderate freaks. Dear lady at the Walmart checkout who glared at me when my two-year-old was whining, screw you. I get it. I mean, we're a polite society. We don't like confrontation. We don't want to stir shit up. But if we all stay silently fuming in the moment and then go home and complain about it on social media, well, the very people who need to hear that message in the moment will remain clueless. And the negative feelings will only perpetuate because nothing will ever change. Let's take the first example. As a dog owner, it could happen that you're engaged in a conversation and as you turn your head, your dog 
happens to relieve himself at that very moment, right? I'm a dog owner. If this happened to me, I would really appreciate it if somebody simply said, yo, your dog just took a big giant dump over there. I would apologize, I would thank them, and I would pick up said giant dump. Everyone would be satisfied and there would be one less turd in the world. It doesn't mean you have to be a jerk about it. Confrontation doesn't have to be negative. It doesn't have to be a fight. We could be a society of communicating individuals, speaking our needs and desires, getting our messages across to the people who need to hear them the most in that moment. Think of the space that would free up for more newsworthy items, like cats cuddling, or cats cuddling birds, or birds cuddling dogs, or dogs cuddling bears, or bears cuddling tigers, or tigers cuddling dolphins. I guess what I mean is more cuddling, less complaining. It was a huge difference back then without a cell phone. Like, nowadays you can do so much like just on a dime. You, you can check your emails and it, it's funny because we're all we're, I feel like we're all glued to our phones now, so I can't Yes, I remember life before cell phone, but I can't really imagine living like that. It was a different way to find information, right? Because when I have the location, it's easier to find my way around. But I manage pretty well. <laughs> if you're an opportunist, you could use it to your advantage to put on display whatever you want on Facebook, Instagram, uh, promote yourself. So I do think there is some positive. Yep. Uh, children are fatter or, you know, they don't want to go play outside, they're, they're in front of their screens all day long, so that's not good. It's the first uh, generation that will be less healthy than their parents and will most probably die younger. It's, uh, it's very tough. The solution is a double-edged sword, you know. I think the solution is to say, you know what, okay, I'll check, you know, my Facebook, whatever, for five minutes. But the other 55 minutes, I'm devoted to you. <clears throat> the problem comes in, you get a phone call, you're expecting that email, uh, you know, you're, you're expecting your final grade. Did you pass? And it becomes uh, an addiction, you know. Uh, I think it's ridiculous that people have to walk and they're not even looking where they're going or, or interacting with anybody. Um, they're just clicking, clicking, clicking to see who called, who called, who called. You know, uh, it, it's not anything that's so important that it can't wait. Yeah. It's uh, partially an individual choice, but it's also, we're always influenced by, uh, you know, our peers or the social environment, so. If you need to get a hold of somebody, it's so much easier to, to do that. Back, back then, we'd call each other over the coin phones, like when we were teenagers and meeting up with friends, but. But you know, like, I love Instagram. So for example, I'm happy to have a smartphone because if I'm seeing something nice, I can snap a picture right away to you know, like to capture a moment. Um, I do feel like it takes up a huge part of our lives. It's, uh, it's a little distracting, and I, I do feel like it takes away from even time with the family sometimes. You know, you just want a moment to be on your phone. But yeah, like I, like yeah. When you go now to a concert, no one is looking at the concerts. Like everyone has this phone. The people began having it at age 15, 16, you know. I waited a while before having it. My Why? first, my first, mm, it's just, I didn't need it, you know, until you don't have it, that's okay, you find another way. What frustrates you about Montreal? Uh, what frustrates me? 
I don't know. There's nothing really that for street. Oh yeah, the roads. <laughs> of course, the roads. Come on. Well, our streets are terrible. Maybe fix our potholes. Uh, I go, I've been to countries, third world countries that have smoother roads than us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for so long, I thought like it was because of the winter. My son coming here, he also has looked at our roads and said, what the heck? I don't understand that. As soon as you go to Ontario, it's not like that. So they clean the money there, you know? So yeah. You don't even have lines painted on your roads in, in many cases, you know, and the potholes, well, we all know about the potholes. And our signalization and some of our roads, they, that's really poor. Arrêtez de blanchir l'argent and do the roads, please. And cutbacks, you know, uh, our roads and so forth, and I find that that's short money. Montreal, firstly, I have to congratulate the mayor that I had never seen that much infrastructure work going on, what it is going on this year. And I don't find that you should inconvenience a whole city. And uh, has been for a few years. You know, even the taxi drivers, okay, uh, with all this uh, uh, work road, uh, uh, working that's going on on the road. And I'm, I hope it, that he keeps on doing it because Montreal's infrastructure was so much neglected. And people can't get to work on time. Uh, taxi drivers can't make, make a, a proper living. I don't know. I think we need to make our cones prettier because there's so many of them. At least make them nice. <laughs> I mean, I just think now everybody just doesn't want to talk to anybody anymore. It's still the same. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I could. Wait, wait, wait. I what do you use... mean they don't want to talk to each other? Well, I just, I, you know, sometimes still, like I'll call someone, they'll, they'll text me instead. Like I just find like, you know, I kind of do miss calling somebody. But sometimes even me, when I just want to say one thing, it's like I'll just text them. To them you know. I answer more abruptly because it'll just be a text and then I send it off. Yeah. Well, I make if I send you a text or an email or something, I'll tell you, you know, call me. It's a lot faster. I expect an answer faster, even though I don't answer all the time. I do miss the calling, and I, I feel, sometimes when people do call me, I almost don't know what to do. Do you feel anxious on the phone? Sometimes, yeah, but if it's a new person, yeah. Like, I forgot what dating is like without social media or without texting. Yeah. You call people? I call people. Really? What kind of people? I text more than I call, but I still call okay. people. <laughs> okay. Why do you laugh? Oh, it's just... I don't know, it's funny. Because <laughs> back then, we, we, we only had one option. We called, right? Yeah, I had the tattoo, the tam tam. <laughs> Beeping. <laughs> no, I had a little. Oh, you had a pager? Of... Yeah, a pager. Oh, you were a drug dealer. No, but we, <laughs> it was a trend at that time. <laughs> no, um. I'm sure you have a smartphone. Right? I don't. You have a flip phone? Yes. Hello. <laughs> High five me. Hello. Good for you. I'm so proud of you. I wish I was And like... I have a flip phone. I it's not it's been not even a year. So I wanted to challenge myself and like I moved to a different country. Will I talk to everyone that I miss? Like if I if I'm not FaceTiming and sending a million photos a day or like um, I didn't really have like like social media outside of Facebook. So it wasn't that wasn't something I used to connect with people, but still like um, if I can't be in like group messages and all these things, like will I, how will I communicate then? The smartphone for me is, it's about business. It's not about playing games. You know, when my phone rings, it's all about business. And like, you know, people don't call me just to have small talk. And you're not gonna take Snapchats and, and stupidness. I don't got no time people for that. People call you? Yeah, I prefer to be called. It's changing now because we don't really use the phone to call. We used, used to, 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 to call a lot before when we had the, the, the line in the house. And now we don't use the phone, we don't use the smartphone, we just text. And um, when, when I moved here, I did, I did delete my Facebook for about eight months and found that I was, I was talking to like my boyfriend, my best friend, my mom, a couple other friends. And this is like five people. And like there were like, 20 people that were like, oh, you're gonna miss you so much, like, tell me how it is, and like... You don't have to have a reason sometimes, just to have to call to get some news and see uh, if everything is going well for the person. People expect, like, I remember I used to work at a cafe and people, when I was moving away, people would be like, I'm gonna be watching your Facebook for, like, how you're doing. It's like, that, is that a real 
like representation of how I'd be doing. Like I would post like a friend I met or like a pretty sunset, but that wouldn't say I'm doing, you know? Maybe she's sad, maybe you want to have coffee with her, with your friend. And so it's more the, 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 the natural um, connection with friends that I'm missing right now. Right. Yeah. I'm very happy to welcome atop the Street Speak soapbox, Montreal actor-writer, a veteran of the show, Michael Hughes. <laughs> Ode to the mail carrier. Once upon a time, you were the heroes of our daily lives. Angels here on Earth, depositing little treasures at our doorstep. A glimpse of you marching along would instantly conjure up excitement and joy. You were the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus all in one. We knew that with each visit came postcards from faraway lands. Love letters from Sabrina Cavendish, who's now married to Greg Hudson. Congratulations, Greg. And birthday wishes from the Hallmark family. But now, a cold wind blows through the National Postal Service. We no longer believe in the magic of the post. Now, when we gain sight of you, wobbling along, plump satchel slung over tired shoulders, we cringe and a general sense of fear starts to permeate. Because these days, snail mail only delivers letters from the unwanted pen pals. Hydro, Bell, and Revenue Quebec. We send out quiet prayers to the mail gods to spare us a visit from the likes of you. Indeed, the dark days of post are upon us. But there is hope for a better future. Oh, ye citizens of this great land, listen to my plea. It is now up to us to do them a service, to scribble a new chapter in the mail carrier's storied history. Let us once again provide them with noble responsibility. Let us pick up our pens and, and overwhelm their satchels with personal connectivity. Let us go back to a time when love letters outnumber junk mail. And once again, we can all look forward to the sight of the great postman. I think, you know, we need to be positive, obviously, and we need to work, as I've done, with politicians and try and, I'd say, get a middle ground to see, okay, you know, we'll take this risk, but could you help us out a bit? I don't know, you know, maybe it's a question of baby boomer. I think baby boomer have a big impact in Quebec. And they're, they, they did big things for Quebec in, in 40 years ago, something like that, but now they're stopping us, you know, because of the bell curve of population. I understand. That the a big, biggest issue is to listen to the young people. There's always hope, of course. Uh, it's such a beautiful city. People come from around the world to shoot movies and so on. There's hope. I, I just think we need to all work together and try and find a solution because it seems to be a, a big problem, unfortunately. Well, I'm very, I've been very happy with uh, what I've seen so far from uh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, I'm glad to see that he developed some of the uh, intelligent aspects of his father. I've met with the Prime Minister, by, way, uh, by the way, to discuss this. Uh, he, this yeah, well, well he, he listened. He gave me 10 minutes of his time. You know, not a lot of people would do that. And uh, it was a good conversation, I think. And uh, good. hopefully. I think Justin Trudeau is giving us a little hope, even though he is a politician, right? And we, we should never, ever forget that he is a politician. But uh, I think he's from the certain generation and the way he was raised. Plus he's a Montrealer too. Daily, we need to be, keep our eyes open, read our papers and our books, educate ourselves and each other, and suggest things to each other about our behavior. Don't let bad behavior just go on by you. Call it out when it happens. It's about taking opportunities when they come uh, and not, con you know, you don't have to build your whole life around changing the world, but you can take the small opportunities when they come. When someone makes a comment, a nasty comment or a racist comment, we have to say something. 
because that spreads, that, e that kind of evil spreads very easily. If I had everyone's ears, I would really encourage people to, first of all, if they wanted to change the world, to look at the small ways that they are immediately able to do that. Uh, and to know that those things make a difference and they have an impact and they are important. And encourage them to make a difference and show them how they can make a difference, not just tell them to make a difference, you know? But more than anything else, I really do believe, you know, if you want to change the world, that you can, it's completely within your power and it's all about the little things. So, you know, go take that and go change the world. That wraps up the latest edition of The Street Speaks. A special thank you to our house band, Skinny Bros, and to storyteller extraordinaire, Nisha Coleman, and actor-writer, Michael Hughes, who both owned our soapbox. Join me next week as Montrealers are speaking out about political corruption. Some are telling me that the language debate is over, and others are sharing with me how it feels to be a volunteer. Also, comic Emma Wilkie, actress Nicole Jones, and improviser comic Inga Knopf all take to the Street Speak soapbox. If you want to get in touch with me, don't be shy. I can be reached on Facebook and on Twitter. See you next time. Watching the Street Speaks.